I can introduce myself. Okay. I'm Liz. That's Paul. Um, <laughs> I work at Data61, and I feel like I'm a bit of an imposter here today because I'm actually a UX designer, and I'm going to be talking to you about doing what UX designers typically do, which is telling everyone else what to do. It's a very important job. So that's largely what this is kind of about. But this is also about the benefits that this model of health hack, which we've used in sort of bioinformatics and health, can really help people. Are we ready to go? Is it all good? OK, proper talk now. No more Kanye. Anyway, so um, yep. So I'm Liz Giller, and I work as an exper user experience designer at CSIRO. Um, typically, I'm not like your kind of usual UX designer that might be embedded in a team that maybe works for a bank or something and develops one product. We work typically with academics and also people who want to get new technology out to places, but that's just where I'm coming from. What I'm here to talk to you about is the other thing I do, which is I help to, I've helped to organize this hackathon for the last two years, which is open source, called Health Hack. So Health Hack, um, essentially, yeah, there's been some interesting moments. So Health Hack helps to connect um, medical researchers and bioinformatics researchers with people who are working in the tech community for a 24 hour to 48 hour hackathon. We've had some people come in that have been ER doctors and given their own demonstrations of how they put anesthetic masks on children. And there's been other things happen, but why do it? So more and more problems are gonna be affected by new technology advancements, which might not like leave researchers with the connections to help them really leap forward, especially when it comes to things that are ostensibly engineering problems. So for example, the one that we've got in the diagram is um, from a health hack in Brisbane in 2016. And it was about um, dental services um, being, there's over treatment um, for them. And it was connected a whole bunch of developers and also academics together to really work on this problem, which is a problem you probably won't see typically come into an agency or something like that without a huge amount of mess. So previous attendees of Health Hack have been able to develop prototypes from these that have benefited the researchers. Um, in one example, they gained two grants and hired the developers involved. If this had been done in a typical method, uh, through traditional routes, it might have cost them around $50,000 and six months and potentially delivered a dud project just because of red tape. So these are the benefits for performing a hackathon. But now it's something for something different. Um, Health Hack has run, the founder's actually in here today, which is nice, Maya's in the back. Um, after five years and, <laughs> and five cities, um, we're actually going to be releasing a how to hack guide. Um, so you can employ this model in other domains. but. Maybe just back up a little bit. There are several reasons why there's a hackathon. Anyone not been to a hackathon? No one. What a, oh, a few. What a great audience. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, there are several reasons why a health hack would be great to run in any of your worlds um, and any of your domains. And this is because these places are a great space to fail. So um, this is a project that I was on when I first went to my first hackathon, which that was Health Hack, um, which was 2015. This was a project that um, came to my team in the form of researchers wanting to do a diabetes application. The trouble with that is there's probably over 200 diabetes apps in the App Store. So it was kind of a very weird dynamic to have an academic sort of sit with a bunch of people who maybe work in commercialization and see where there was actual opportunity for doing something different. So had that been out in the real world, that might have taken a really, really long time because they probably would have had X amount of cash to do this specific thing, or they might have been basing something on this specific thing. But because it wasn't a weekend, it could be turned over really quickly. Um, it also creates safe spaces to surface new technology. Um, this was the winner from this year, um, who used physiotherapy um, and TensorFlow in <laughs> Hi, I'm Sylvia Pfeiffer. I'm at HealthTech 2017 here in Sydney. Ah, we, we won the gold medal. I posted a, uh, a challenge um, uh, in physiotherapy to calculate uh, range of motion in limbs and uh, around joints automatically um, with, with uh, video analysis. I uh, never thought I would get a team, and, but I had an awesome team. There was like six people there, and they worked all night long to get this working in, within 24 hours. 
No details disclosed right now, they're just for a nice surprise right. at the end. And they built the world's first fully automated range of motion calculation software. And I'm happy to say that we completed this today at <laughs> Health Hack 2017. So it was, uh, I was blown away, just amazing. Um, I came to help that because our software, uh, CodeU, is being used in the healthcare space and we want to enable uh, developers in the community to extend CodeU, which is a video conferencing platform so a, for, for healthcare professionals to enable telehealth. Um, and we want to enable developers in the community to develop specialized functionality to plug into the live healthcare console. So basically to supercharge the practitioners with some automated tools, be that artificial intelligence, video analytics, you know, anything that, that can help the practitioner provide better service, better consulting. Bliss, with the key organizer, is one of my colleagues. So I knew about it. I also knew about it from last year. Last year I couldn't attend, so I'm really excited that I'm, I was able to attend this year. I was originally just going to participate in health tech and then Liz approached me and said why don't you submit a topic that people could work on and I went that's a good idea you know that way at least I know that I'm getting something out of this and I got so much more out of it than I would have just uh, participating in, in this event. Oh we have a couple of ideas maybe turning what we've done today into a mobile app Definitely I'll be looking at uh, integrating that functionality into Kobe itself because it's just the most amazing demonstration of giving people extra functionality in a live video call that they would not have if they were to meet face to face. So that's a pretty new thing. Um, prior to that, um, there wasn't really much in the physio space for doing it over WebRTC. So this presented an opportunity for Sylvia to get to know a bunch of different developers who actually busted up from Canberra to Sydney, which I don't know if you've ever taken the bus from Canberra. I haven't, but I haven't heard it rated. Um, so she got to be able to, because of Health Act, she made that connection and they managed to make in within 24 hours, because it was shorter this year, they managed to make a demo, uh, demonstrable prototype of physiotherapy to measure people's limbs. And this has big implications. I mean, imagine rural health, imagine the things that we can do with this. So there's also other reasons to hack. Oh, come on, move. Um, we, these are great spaces to explore problems. So this is another project that came um, before I was um, helping out with Health Hack, which dug through a whole lot of um, medical research um, funding data and sort of could visualize the fact that well, it kind of speaks for itself who gets all the money from research grants from this diagram. So this was achieved in a weekend in Melbourne a couple of years ago. So, and there's also, yeah, people do get grants and people do get jobs. So this was a project that came out of Health Hack, which did get funding. And it was for people who, were, uh, people who are gamblers and to help them sort of check in and get helped <laughs> by it. Um, which became an app. So typically, and maybe an app would not go to consumer facing very fast in this example. Uh, maybe the people who are researching it would take months to analyze the data. And because they developed a prototype really fast and they'd missed out on a funding grant, they really felt confident that they were gonna get it the next time around from what they developed at Health Hack. Um, so yeah, this can come about basically because we're doing a model that's different from a lot of hacks. I saw a few hands go up saying you don't know what a hackathon is. But typically a hackathon usually follows this kind of formula where people do not have domain expertise um, in their hack and it kind of can get a little bit messy. So as you can see, people get data, they get pitches, they form teams, um, maybe 24 to 72 hours later they present the results. And sometimes this can be good, sometimes this can be bad, but it, when we want to solve for specific problems, it really helps to have the person who actually is involved in the problem in the room. In the example, we had Sylvia, and we've had the psychological researchers on the um, Gambling Edition app come in. And that really makes a lot of difference. See, in a health hack, we've been able to involve a whole heap of different people, and we've vetted the problems before they've actually come in and pre like, made uh, really good project briefs for hackers to actually work on. So one of the problems that happens a lot in hackathons I've been to is that 
you have teams of really smart, really involved people who maybe can spend two to three hours arguing of what's this project meant to be about, especially if they've been given just a whole heap of data, um, which happens, or maybe they just want to develop something with a new technology. There's actually been no specific problem scope. So we've been, been fortunate to get involved with maybe all of the, all of these institutions at one time or another. And they're not just medical organizations, sometimes they're social institutions. Um, we have assessed problem owners based on the interesting data or source information they have available and being available to be in the team during the hackathon and more importantly, being able to open source it because we don't want anyone to give free labor over a weekend. That's just not fair. Um, another way to solve the problem not currently used by a competitor, this is a problematic one sometimes when people are in each other's space and um, a possible solution that can be achieved in the weekend. So um, usually these are researchers that are directly involved, but we've had social organizations come in. So for example, on the right, you have a researcher from Garvin. On the left, um, a representative from um, Hello Sunday Morning, which um, helps people to drink responsibly. And on the right, as you can see, it was a Google Translate for medical terms. And we, so what happens is when we get through these problems, we invite the problem owners to come pitch. So this came from Brisbane. Um, it's important that people actually pitch their teams. So people actually want to get involved in projects that they like and they want to spend time on. We don't just allocate people to projects or we just don't allocate teams and like, here's some data, see you in 72 hours, have fun. That doesn't happen. And then hackers can talk to program problem owners in a speed dating format. So once a problem owner has given a presentation on whatever their problem is, people can go and ask questions and see if they actually want to get involved. And this helps to clarify things that they're doing because sometimes people have excellent ideas that no one surfaced or maybe I didn't surface when I talked to the problem owners, which is really important. Um, and then they form a team according to the problem's needs. So we've had teams that have been problematically sometimes full of the same expertise, but often we get a nice good mix. So we've had data scientists, maybe like a very data heavy team that's crunching a lot of you know, algorithmic kind of data. And maybe there's been a more service design problem where there's been more designers involved. And so this step really makes all the difference, actually trying to get a lot of um, domain experts involved and um, you know, an actually very novel problem that doesn't see a lot of the light of day from commercialization or from people that are working in the commercial industry to see, um, have them pitch the hackers, the form teams with the problem owners, and then, and then cook. So this step really makes all the difference. And this is a thing that um, is going to be interesting because we've had for the first time people with AI sort of problems come into Sydney Health Hack. Um, and when you look at it, there's going to be more interaction between um, people who are fundamentally using a lot of data and um, the industry sort of merging together. And it's going to, it's going to require people to become more like sort of data literate. And there's more that I've seen in the space coming into Health Hack about sort of teaching people about what's going on in the industry. The example here, as you can see, is not something that's kind of blown from the headlines yesterday. It's from 2016, where yes, the, um, the equivalent of Medicare in the UK um, struck a deal with um, Google about sharing health data. And also where we collect this kind of data from, which is, you know, as it says, is it unethical to um, force people to become sick to acquire data? So this is why it's really good to get um, communities involved in your work and just engage with um, a lot of people. One of the people who helps out with Brisbane Health Hack now said he would never have known um, these kind of, or never interacted with these researchers had it not been to their health hack and he does not work in the health space. So yeah, there are ample ways you can hack ideas together. Sorry, this would not embed. Come on. Which, and this is the sort of thing that we're seeing coming more in. And this was um, James who presented um, Project H1 in 2016. So very different from the um, physio one that you just saw. This was my colleague. Um, they made a dance game out of DNA sharing. <laughs> So um, she actually was dancing DNA pairs of, um, I think she's saying there, oh God, it's brutal, but I'm not sure, because I think she was dancing for a long time. Um, she was dancing DNA pairs, I think it was, where is it? Is it of a tomato or something? Yeah, it was a tomato 
tomato genome. So there are more ideas sort of coming together. So before you go to lunch today and when you're considering all these fantastic ideas that are really highbrow and probably, you know, the general public doesn't hear of that much, consider getting involved in health hack. I'll put it back in presentation mode. Make it nice and big. Um, Brisbane is already getting kicked off. Um, if you want to get in touch, um, help out with Brisbane, um, get in touch with Russian. Um, get on our mailing list. And also we're going to be um, writing a content guide of how to run problem-focused hackathons because I know I can sense that a lot there saying this is what we look for in problem owners when they come into our hackathon, but there's a lot more maybe finesse doing that. So we are going to be releasing a content guide of how to run a problem-focused hackathon like Health Hack. And um, thank you for listening today. Cheers. Okay. Yes, James? Um, this is more just a comment and a, 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 a well done to Health Hack. I actually got my job. Oh, yeah, um, I forgot to single you out. Um, through <laughs> Health Hack. That's how I actually met the researchers and done my research for what I do. Yeah, get involved in Health Hack, and then you too can make an excellent presentation full of memes. Thank you, James. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah? Um, uh, are you running Ryan Magic? Because I remember there was one. There was. Um, if, Sorry? Oh, she was wondering if there was a health hack in Melbourne. Um, there was. Uh, there was just a not enough energy last year to keep running it. If you want to come and talk to like Myra and me to um, maybe if you want to run one, that would be great. Anything else? No stupid questions. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Oh, everyone. I'll correct myself. <laughs>